in the middle of this vast urban jungle flows the Los Angeles River. From its source, it runs through highways, skyscrapers and waves of steel wires until it reaches Long Beach where it finally meets the Pacific Ocean. Could you believe that in the past this river was a home to wolves, deer, and even California golden bears? There are still places where you can find life, remains of the great river it once was and we are going to search for them. When I first came here, I saw a narrow concrete drain without any signs of life. And that is not how I imagined the Los Angeles River. The LA River was once a completely natural wild river, just like any other river you can imagine. Hi, my name is Mireya Valencia and I am the Education and Programs Manager at Friends of the LA River. Most people looking at the Los Angeles River don't see it as a proper river. And it's no surprise considering how it looks almost through its entire length. Friends of the LA River was founded in 1986 by Lewis McAdams. He was a poet activist. And the story goes that he was walking along the LA River one day and there was a huge chain link fence and he was with some friends and he actually cut a hole in the fence and said, why is the river fenced off? The river should be for the animals and the river should be for the people. From its source to the mouth, the river varies a lot. We saw a narrow concrete channel, areas full of trees and birds, and we saw it become a wide river at its outlet. So the Army Corps of Engineers channelized the entire LA River, filled the entire LA River with concrete, but there are three very special areas of the LA River that we refer to as natural bottom meaning that they actually have natural soil on the bottom and are not covered in concrete. And these three areas are the Sepulveda Basin in the San Fernando Valley, here at the Glendale Narrows, and another area down in Long Beach. So these three areas have concrete on the very sides, but the middle is natural soil. Many species came back to the Los Angeles River, found a way to survive in this unique ecosystem and are now dependent on it. There are lots of birds in the LA River that you can't find in other parts of LA because they need fresh water, they need a river riparian ecosystem. I never get tired of seeing great blue herons. They're one of the most impressive, beautiful birds that you can see here. I also like the black neck stilts, which are these funny little guys with long legs. You can also see some animals in the water. Like I have, finally after three years, I saw some frogs hopping around in the river. So that was really exciting.
nature has done such a good job surviving all of the pressure humans have put upon it. However, surrounded by this loud and big city, it still needs to be cautious. Being an urban river, the LA River is currently threatened by pollution. Because the LA River is so connected to the city, to our streets, via the storm drains, via the infrastructure, the millions of residents, each individual action can impact the river. When they filled the LA River up with concrete, they also created this series of storm drains which connect to the river via underground tunnels. So there are thousands of these storm drains here in Los Angeles. So when people litter, when people throw trash on the ground, or when there's any liquid contaminants on the ground, such as fertilizer, uh, those will all get washed into the storm drains when it rains. And we saw the consequences of every single one of those actions along the entire length of the river. When you come to the river, unfortunately, you can see a lot of trash stuck in the trees. Uh, and although it doesn't look very pretty, it's actually a good thing because since we have trees in certain areas of the river, those areas that do have trees are able to catch the trash and sort of act as a filter uh, because if those trees were not there, the trash would simply flow off to Long Beach, to the Pacific Ocean, which is where the LA River ends. Everything that affects the river affects the marine ecosystem. By preserving the Los Angeles River, we are protecting life in the Pacific Ocean. Friends of the LA River have been organizing so-called cleanups for years, involving thousands of people contributing to taking care of this living filter. But how did those trees and green areas survive channelization? They tried to pour concrete in these areas. They wanted to fill these areas up with concrete as well. But there was simply too much groundwater, too many natural springs that were spewing up water from the ground. And concrete starts out wet, it starts out in a barrel, then concrete dries and it becomes hard. So if the concrete was never able to fully dry out because there was too much groundwater, then the concrete was never able to harden. And the soil that was exposed at the very bottom still had seeds in it. So these seeds all started to sprout back all by themselves. And once the seeds grew back and the trees came back, animals were able to find their way back to these three uh, special areas of the river. The late attempt to cover the riverbed with concrete gave nature something to come back to, but definitely not enough to let it fully recover. If you go to the Sepulveda Basin, that's one of the most vibrant LA River ecosystems, and it has the most birds, I believe, of any parts of the river, and that's because not only is there a natural part of the river right there, but there's also a huge wildlife reserve right next to it. So animals can survive just in the river itself, but they do best when they have adjacent land to get slightly different habitats and to have more space and a more variety of uh, vegetation around them. So it's not only about just fixing the concrete channel itself, it's also about 
creating spaces around the river. I mean, personally, I think the sky's the limit in terms of bringing back biodiversity to the river. Of course, there are some very, very sensitive species that may not be able to find their way back, but look at all the animals that have come back from very little human intervention. Imagine if we did set our minds to it and we prioritized biodiversity and we prioritized creating habitat, then I'm confident that many, many animals can find their way back to the Alley River. I think the LA River is the prime example of how resilient nature is. Humans tried to cover it up in concrete and nature said, no, we will not be covered. We will grow back and we will persist. So to me, that's really inspiring. If it wasn't for the LA River, Los Angeles would have never existed. But now it's just the shadow of the river it once was. A relic of the decision made without taking wildlife into consideration. Behind the story of constant struggle between nature and man, we found the richness of life we did not expect to find. Imagine what this place could look like if instead of fight we chose to cooperate.